So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel, and I am you. <laughs> In the simplest terms, I am you. And my role here tonight is to mirror your greatness, is to stretch you beyond who you think you are, and to take you into a place where you probably haven't visited before. And to really stretch your mind into allowing the greatness within. You know, and it's funny because human beings have really been given the bum rap. You know, when you, when you say the word human beings, a lot of negative connotations kind of tend to come up with that. And we must remember that's just been a very temporary, a transitional phase, and we kind of gotten a reputation because of how we've been being for many, many years or many, many de decades and millennia, if you like, when in truth, we're so much more than that. We're infinity in motion, divinity in motion. And the hard thing, or something that we've all been having a very hard time with is recalling our divinity. We can all talk it, can't we? You all can talk to you blue in the face about you know, the God within or the divine or the spirit being, whatever. You can all talk about it, but how many of you are connected directly to it on an ongoing basis? How many have that as a limitless reservoir of insight, of answers on tap? And that's what's so marvelous about the brain, the way the brain's been designed is, again, a bum rap in that we've been misinformed or there's been a misunderstanding as to how the brain works. We've come to believe that there is this standalone intelligence and, and that is driven by how many books we read or our life experience or how many classes or degrees we have. But in truth, that doesn't even scratch the surface of what intelligence is truly available. It just pales into such oblivion. There's no words to describe how insignificant that collection of human intelligence represents. It's so insignificant. And pretty much every day, I'm very privileged because I have this experience where as I'm kind of waking up, I'm taken into this level of consciousness, which is just intelligence. It's almost, it's very difficult actually to explain, so I'm, I'm doing my best here. It's a field of consciousness that is infinite, its depth is infinite. It has no parameters or boundaries, cannot be boxed. and when I'm in that space, I'm shown that that's our true nature. And then the difference from that to this, in that space, is imp <coughs> impossible. As is the only words that, that come to me at that moment. H how did you do that? Because we're so, we're so much more than what we've become conditioned to see ourselves as and even saying that it's like ah oh, come on that's just so it doesn't even scratch the surface again so we're here to stretch your mind now if you can start seeing your mind as malleable that would be a really good start it's not fixed into your gray matter your gray matter is more akin to an antenna can you imagine you've got little antennas there so if you see your mind as awareness and your truest nature as awareness, that would be the most apt way to describe or define who and what you really are, awareness. And when you conjure up this concept of awareness, what do you feel into that? How do you perceive awareness? Tell me some of the characteristics of awareness. Yeah, unlimited. unlimited. Awareness, unlimited. Does, does awareness have a limitation? It's a 
endless, infinite concept. Anyone else? When I say awareness, what comes? Knowing. A knowing. Yeah, yeah. At the most basic level, it's from our senses as well. Oh, cool, great. Yes, very nice. Yes, and beyond our senses. Beautiful. So it's, it's more to say our senses have come from that. Yes, I love it. So in our truest nature, we are awareness personified. Just kind of let that in for a minute. Awareness has been in existence for eons. Then it thought of human form. And we are awareness emanating from human form. But the more labels we put on what it means to be human, the more we dull that awareness. So the awareness in its natural state is infinite, all-knowing, which is where your intuition comes from. It's an all-knowing intelligence. It's the very intelligence that created the human body, which is infinite. If you've ever marveled at that, and I do every day, how did you, how'd you come up with that? Come on. The inner workings, the, you know, reproduction, and digestion, everything. It just blows me away. It, it, to me, it's dumbfounding. It's like, it's like looking up at the stars. Have you ever done a look at them? It's like, kind of, can't, can't comprehend that. It's too much. So this infinite awareness exists within us and can bring in answers at the drop of a hat. It is the intelligence behind the body, it is intelligence behind the solar system, it is the intelligence behind all the inner workings of our universe. So it's not, it's not limited to what a professor at Harvard knows, it's not limited to what doctors know. You know it created all those things. And the more we allow in that we are that awareness, the more available it becomes to us. There is this profound correlation between who you see yourself to be and how much of that information becomes available to you. You know, for a long time there's been this talk about using more of our brain. We only use 5 to 10% <coughs> of that area. Is people familiar? It's quite, I've been a few movies about that. Lucy and Limitless and various other things. But what's missing from the equation, this is what I love. I love discovering true science, spiritual science, which is the governing science. Not human science, which is a pinhole of actual science, but the whole, the real science. And what has been revealed to me is the brain mirrors our universe and the universe is this neural network light is information bouncing around from solar system to solar system it's a whole giant brain and we are a micro of that we are it as well it depends how you look at it and to use more of your brain is the ultimate spiritual evolution. It's not academic. It comes from a spiritual connection. Studying harder, it's directly connected to or related to your level of connection. And your level of connection, and I, I love this because there's all this beautiful physics behind this your level of connection to this infinite intelligence is derived from how much truth you see about yourself and what does that mean now let me sum that up quite simply is you have a backpack call it the subconscious mind that is filled stuff with limiting self concepts What's an example? I'll share some that are in the room today. Money and me don't match is a limiting self-concept. 
birthing needs to be painful is a limiting self-concept. Spirituality and fun don't go hand in hand. Enlightenment must take a long time. Um, I can't make relationships work. I am a failure in business. These are concepts that you guys are carrying at the moment. Now, we all carry varying degrees. Depends how much self-love you were raised with as a child. We'll talk more about self-love soon because it's key. So these self-concepts are a filter for that limitless awareness, that limitless intelligence. Imagine you have this, imagine this intelligence is pure light, the sun, okay? And every self-doubt, every limiting concept you hold is a cloud filtering that light from penetrating. Now that has two key impacts. One is it stops you from accessing the answers, the information, can't connect, yeah? The other is it stops your organs in your body working to their maximum. Because the beauty about the human body is it's in direct correlation with your higher purpose. So your DNA is this intelligence being manifesting in a physical way. So your body and this intelligence are one and the same. And the more out of alignment we are with that, the more aches and pains and illness we create or exhaustion we create in our body. So what does that mean? It means when we have thoughts that are untrue, such as, I'm not lovable, I'm a failure, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, I'm gonna screw this up, nobody listens to me, nobody respects me, da 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 and so on and so forth. Any concepts that we have borrowed from somebody else, they're not true, and where there is not a non-truth, the body says, ooh, get this out of me. I can't get to the light. I need the light. I'm built of light. And another word for light is love. I'm built of love, of light. And you're denying me of that. And over a prolonged period of time, if an organ or a muscle or anything in the body is denied that light, that life energy, what happens to it? It starts deteriorating, right? So imagine if we were to eclipse the sun for a period of a week. How would things on earth be going? Eh, so well. What about a month? We're going to be in trouble. Imagine we've eclipsed the sun for 30 years. Oh, we're in big trouble. And that's what happens. The many of us, depending on how, how long we've been around here on this, this journey for, we've got eclipses that have been there for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And the body's going, please stop believing that about yourself. I cannot stand it anymore. It's denying health. And the other interesting thing is that these thoughts, we live in a physical and non-physical universe. And I don't even want to divide it into that. We live in, in a spectrum. Spectrum of frequencies that range from densely physical into the opposite. There's opposites in every direction. That's how our universe is just opposites everywhere. It's quite amazing. So within that field, everything began with the thought. Thought precedes physicality. And so the body is reflecting the thoughts. The thoughts of non-truth and the thoughts of truth. And the more truthful thoughts that we're embodying, the healthier, more youthful and more energetic we are. And the more answers we're able to connect to. So the human body is purposefully engineered to reflect truth and to deteriorate under states of non-truth. It is a system of balance for the earth. The earth and humanity is directly correlated and you can you can look at that in so many different ways from 70% water on the earth, 70% water in the human being, and so many different factors we are directly connected to the earth. So we are pivotal to the earth's evolution 
And for that to happen, there cannot be this total imbalance of negativity and non-truth. So that's why human beings start deteriorating under extreme conditions of non-truth, because the earth is like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't deal with that. <laughs> that's not helpful. Yeah. So, so when we look at when doctors don't know, they have separated, for some odd reason, the mind out of the body. And if you reflect on yourself, where does your mind end and your body begin? Is, it, is your mind just in here? Stub your toe and you'll realize you've got awareness everywhere. So is there any delineation between mind and body? Can they be delineated? So when we talk when doctors don't know, we look at some very logical things. Even if we move away from a spiritual concept, we look at if we want to move something within our body, how do we do that? Through thought. I want to move my hand, I have an intention. Yeah. So everything is responding to thought. This is your world. You have the ultimate authority over this. Can you get that? You blink when you want to blink. You sleep when you want to sleep. Yeah. You've got control over all muscles. You can whistle, you can hop, you can skip, you can do all these amazing things. You are a god over this. So what that means is, it means so many different things. It means, A, you can cause your own illness. And B, the good news, you can heal your own illness. So the symptoms in the body are reflecting whether the God is in alignment with its truth or not. So the body is reflecting the non-truths that are there. So we've been engaged with a TV show we're creating called When Doctors Don't Know. And we have many people come to us with <coughs> HIV, Crohn's disease, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, all these symptoms. And when a doctor examines or wants to heal, they look at the physical body. But when you zoom out and you go to a higher perspective, an enlightened perspective, you see that the human body and thought are one. You cannot move the mind and go, oh, let's just treat the body. Because in that way, all you're looking at is symptom. If you treat the symptom, you never treat the cause how are you fully to heal? It will just come back. If you are able to treat the symptom, which many symptoms are not treatable in that world. So we bring it back to truth. If we look at the body being a reflection of the mind, where does the healing begin? In the mind. We heal the mind to heal the body. Now there's a lot of resistance to this concept for, some, for several reasons. One is it means we're responsible. And sometimes we, we don't want to think we're responsible for causing things in our body. But if we flip that around, we can realize, well, that means I'm responsible for healing it, and that's powerful. I'm not leaving it up to somebody else or some divine intervention to choose whether I'm going to live or not to live. Because that divine intervention is, is showing you through your body that there's an untruth. That's what the divine intervention is. I'm trying to heal you. That's what the illness is. I'm trying to heal you. You're taking it as a punishment. It's not a punishment. You're punishing yourself by holding on to something that isn't true. So with all these experiences, we've had some amazing experiences where as we move into our elevated awareness, this is what's so interesting is we can perceive things outside of ourselves. So not only can I elevate my awareness and perceive the energies within my own body, the causes of illness in my own, my own body, but we can perceive in other people as well. And this is what we do. We teach people how to elevate the awareness to such a degree you can see what's going on in someone's body. And there's some very hardcore physics around what makes that possible. One is we are all connected through awareness. Number two is we feel pulses of frequency vibrations 
so we can feel somebody's vibrations. Our mind is designed to perceive thought, and it's thought that's trapped in the body, so we can perceive what is the thought trapped into the body. And that's how come we're able to do things so quickly, instead of trying to use intellect and go, oh, I wonder what that is. Instead of looking at a microscope or a blood test, we just go bang straight, and what is in that organ? What is that eclipse? And the body says, bang, it's the self-hate, it's the self-doubt, it's the self-this. It's the... We know in an instant what needs to be healed. So we could see with this guy with HIV that as a child, he was constantly feeling like an outcast. No matter what he did as a child, he couldn't get it right for his parents. This isn't good enough, that's not good enough. Whatever you do, whatever you say, whatever you dress, whatever you, couldn't get it right. So the HIV, is the full manifestation of you're an outcast. He completely, because he believed it, he created it. Is then there's not much bigger of a of a manifestation of the experience of an outcast than having HIV. You're over there. We don't want you here. We want you over there. He created that. All right. And we look at each person, the fibromyalgia. Every illness has a corresponding thought frequency whether it's chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, whatever, there is, instead of calling them um, chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia, they should be called what they are. I'll give you an example. So the woman who came to us with fibromyalgia, we are able to connect into her body. Her body says, I can't do enough. No matter how hard I push myself, whatever it is is not enough. And you'll see that. Every time we meet someone with fibromyalgia, it is a permutation of that pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until the body says, oh my God, just slow down, please slow down. You're killing me. You're killing you. <laughs> so every illness has a corresponding belief system. It's a frequency. And the frequency goes to whatever part of the body that matches that frequency, whatever organ is creating that. Yes. Can I ask if like everyone with fibromyalgia has the same thought process or is it variation really of on? variation of okay. when it's something as specific as fibromyalgia, you you generally find it's almost identical. But when it's something a little bit more general like say a back pain, it will be within the ballpark of not supported, um, can't cope the different reasons why that's happening and I was saying to Margot earlier what we impart to people is not to know these things on an intellectual level but to look at it on a case by case to be able to tap in tune in why because that's where the power is the power is what is the cause and what is their truth and everyone's truth is like a thumbprint it's unique to them and truth has this profound effect to the body just loves it it craves it and when we hit on our own personal truth the body just goes let's go the illness it's like that's all i wanted you to know that's all that's all i was trying to show you just the truth now amongst that the body might want different diet or different people in the life other truths that need to be fulfilled as well so when we look at healing we're looking at all factors we're looking at what is mind body and soul need in that moment we are a combination and yes you can heal illness without looking at all three but it can be much faster and more sustaining when all three are being addressed I feel there's questions formulating yeah, here one. yes go when Yes, yes, and, and it's worth sharing a little bit about what truth is, okay? Um, because we, we often hear the truth will set us free, but how many people are really going, oh, well, where's the truth? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, people hear it and they know it, but it's not the first thing. They're going, well, I need a BMW. <laughs> I need a new partner. I need to do No, you need truth. Yeah, so I just want to see what we need to just share on, on truth. It's whatever you need to know to bring you back to who you are. 
And another way I like to look at what is truth is it's what works. It's what works. And when we maybe we'll talk a little bit more personally, we can look at some individual truths and that will give you a deeper grasp. But we have our own individual truth and when the body, it's this amazing connection, we can actually rewire, is that the best way to word it? Um, dissolve. We can dissolve old programs, old wiring in the brain, like physically and metaphorically. Dissolve old program by hearing truth. The brain just goes, celebrates. New you know, pathways are being formed as we do that. Or freed up is probably a better way I'm seeing it. It's more like they're being dissolved to allow in this unconstrained information rather than through all this labyrinth of um, interpretations. Some more questions on this side of the room. Yes. How the changes in the mind actually happens and how quickly it happens and how gently it happens. Yeah. And that is a lot to do with the truth as well because then they're accepting it. Yes. Without fighting it and building up the walls. Yes, the resistance the doesn't help. Yeah, and just, yeah. when the wall gets down, they just like, absolutely, they think it's nothing left of it because it's been so confused. And it's quite funny, we always watch this within ourselves and other people is when you clear a non-truth and you give someone a truth and you ask them what was that thing that we just cleared it's almost like they can't remember it That's right. it's gone it's not part of who they are anymore like you ask me what of all the things that I cleared last week it's like I don't know <laughs> I don't know what like I try and remember to when we're writing books and things but I just can't I can't access it anymore it's old um, oh, I don't want to go next without um Yes, the other amazing thing is, is that there's the direct correlation between the inner and the outer. So as you clear a belief on the inside, could be, for example, I can't be trusted with money. And once you clear that, because that creates a blockage in allowing money in, you don't want to be seen as somebody who's untrustworthy, so you push money away. And so you don't let opportunities for money to come in. So what's amazing is as that shifts, all of a sudden, the energetic barriers or the, you know, the sabotage that we're creating physically and energetically, that shifted and those opportunities start coming in. And this is what we find is every time we shift something within ourselves or with people we work with, new level of ideas come in. New levels of opportunities come in. New levels of connectedness come in. It's amazing that we're all beaming out. No, I don't want that in. Yes, I'll allow that in. It's like, no, I don't want money in. Yes, I'll allow hardship in. Um, no, I don't want an easy path coming in. I want to struggle, let that in. We're all doing that. Oh, you would be amazed at how much we're all doing that. And that's not to acknowledge you for letting in great things. You're all here today. This is a great thing. Um, <laughs> but things that we're pushing out. No, I don't want a deeper relationship with my wife. Just forget about it. You know, I, you know, I, I want to feel on my own and alienated and the victim and all these things. So they're all non-truths. And, and as you would have noticed with life, life is already, without you trying, highlighting the non-truths. These repeat lessons constantly coming up and coming up keep being broke keep being broke keep having relationship fellows keep having relationships, keep having arguments with kids blah, blah blah life is already trying to show you where your non-truths are and if you're wondering on an intellectual level what where am i holding a non-truth i'll tell you very soon wherever you have struggle wherever there's a situation that you're not fulfilled by it could be your physical health it could be your relationships, it could be your finances, wherever there is a lack of fulfillment is because there is a non-truth blocking that. Because non-truths show up in our physical body and in our physical environment as blockages. So often we have people go, oh, I've got no blockages, I go, really just, wow, take a look. And it's not to say there's anything wrong with having a blockage, you can have blockages, that's okay. But if you are wanting more, then it's good to look at and clear that through. 
So where we need to go? Um, right, there's a couple of things we can do. I feel there's some. There's some answers that need to be given around what's going to help you guys really let it. A few little things we can do. How? What was my time check? There, I just got a time check. Thirty to okay, go. Oh, that's good. Good, 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 good. good. All right. So, I want to look at what would be at a group level. So we can't do everything individual today. What at a group level would be your biggest question as a group? And I'll, I'll tell you what I'm feeling. So the biggest questions are in this room is how do I love myself? How do I see myself as more? Why do I keep attracting this self-sabotage? There are three things that are standing out in this room today. So I want to I want to address something for you guys today and help move you forward. There's a couple of ways I'm going to do that. Um, is there, out of those, what would you guys feel is most valuable for you? Yeah, that's vote. Okay. So, um, the first one was, what was the first one? How do I love myself? That was the first one. So that was the second one. How do I love myself? Who wants to know answers to that? Yeah. Vote, hands up. What's number so, one? So How do I stop attracting self sabotage? <laughs> that was your one? Is that yeah, where that came from? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other one was How do I see myself as more? Oh, let's split. We're split. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look. Let's let's see. I'll see if I can answer as many of those as we can. Okay, so let's look at this. Yeah, let's go. Um, the self love. Let's start with that one. Because self-love is the access to this universal intelligence. It's really what's missing from humanity at the moment. And the more we can embody that, the body just goes, hallelujah, that's what I've been after. Thank you very much. So the more we shift truth, the non-truth, that allows self-love. That's what we're actually creating. We just Self-love is already there, but we've got it covered up with all these other things. Okay, so how do I allow in self-love? Okay, I feel I need to kind of go around. Some of you got different pockets around. It. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, a big one is I need other people's acceptance and their opinions to let that in. Okay, you'll know whether that relates to you or not. Eh, this corner. Um, I'll give you the truth. They are all looking at you for acceptance. Yeah. They're looking at you for validation. They see you as a leader in this field, and you're going, oh, I'm wondering if everyone's on my side or whether they're coming with me or not, if they're okay to move forward. They're going, oh, I wonder when they're gonna move forward. Okay, so you need just to embody that you are the leader, you are the thought leader, and they're looking for you for that inspiration. And the universe can't wait <laughs> for you to wait to get everyone's sign off. Okay, things are moving too quickly. Okay, let's see, is there anything else we need on that one? You have permission to move forward alone, if need be. Yeah. Now, an analogy I always like to, to give is, um, is, is a dark room, yeah? Imagine this room is pitch black. Imagine I'm holding a candle and a lighter and I'm going, Mark, should I light it up? Yeah, I'm waiting for you to light yours. Are you going to light yours? What happens? We're all still left in darkness. We can be toying and froing, but nothing happens. Oh, I'm not sure whether to light. But if I light, guess what happens? Everyone can see. So when you light and you move forward, everyone gets to see. That's the greatest service. To hold back and go, oh, I'm not going to light now, is the disservice. You're not honoring anyone. You think, oh, I'm going to ruffle feathers or oh, they're going to feel intimidated, all this nonsense. That's just the ego trying to hold everyone back. In truth, do everyone a favor and be the light. That's the greatest service. Okay, anything else? 
also need to know on that was on the self love front. husbands, children that don't advocate or support your space. They're not here to. Yeah? You're here to pioneer forward. Again, it's the same, be the light. More than that, it's lead by example. And if they can't keep up with that frequency, they'll fall away. And that's a win. Because either they're going to keep up, and you'll have them supporting or they're not going to keep up because they were holding you back so you don't want them hanging on and you'll have someone that is supporting so you can't lose it's emotional, I get it but you can't lose so just keep stretching beyond it doesn't matter where anyone else is at we're not here to keep the status quo that's not working for anyone Okay, next thing, well, you guys in terms of self-love and what's holding that back. A few things around giving yourself permission around self-love. And what you need to know around that is there's no prerequisites for self-love. There's no, I need to pray more often, I need to meditate more, I need to eat more, I need to do more yoga, I need to give to charities more, I need to sponsor homeless children. There's no prerequisites. There's a big sense that I, I'm not doing enough in order to earn self-love. I don't, I don't deserve self-love. Guess what the universe has to say about that? That just perpetuates a denial of self-love. How can you ever get to self-love when you're indulging in I don't deserve self-love? Does that make sense? The ego, do you understand? Ego is this polar opposite in you that likes to trick you, turns everything upside down and says, you're not ready for self-love. Oh, I'm not ready for self-love. You don't deserve it. Oh, okay. This is, perpetuates the denial. Oh, I've got to wait for everyone else's permission. Yeah, you do. And the truth is, they're all waiting for yours. It flips everything upside down. That's how society sees everything, completely inverted. It's like the doctors, the body... We have studied the body, that's where they cure the illness. <laughs> but, okay, good. All right. Where do we need to go from here? We're all good. Let's just let's just bring in some self love. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Yes. We just amazing. exactly. You just you're right you're right there with me, really. We're just about to do that. Okay, cool. Do you wanna ask about your chronic fatigue? I feel we might want to get that out of the way. Or you're good with where we're at. Um, okay, cool. All right, cool. All right, so what we're going to do, um, I want to cover a couple of those key points and then we're just going to bring in some of that energy. This is the great thing about we live in this giant brain called a universe, and within a brain, you'll be familiar with his thoughts, right? And we can access all kinds of thought. Now we're going to do some really beautiful things with that soon. So we're going on to sabotage. How do we, how do we stop attracting self-sabotage? Okay, first thing that comes up there is stop associating with people that put you down. Yeah? That is just being a glutton for punishment. Yeah. That's your ego getting its way. Keep, keep reminding them that they're a nobody. Keep, keep having them not remember who they are. The ego loves that. Yeah. So, like you would push away food that's not good for you, or rat poison, right? You see rat poison, you go, ooh, let's eat that. You don't do that, right? <laughs> like the same way you push away rat poison, push away the people who are being poisonous. You've got you to see it in the same way. This, one of the blockages around that is I don't want to be offensive. Well, who are you offending the most? You. You're eating the rat poison. Who's who's most offended right now? You. You're trying to spare somebody else. When don't you eat the rat poison? I'll have it. I, I don't want to spare you the poisoning. Yeah, I want to spare you that. So I'll have it. Come on. Let's let's embody some truth here. 
Okay, the next thing that comes up is for some of you, it's very powerful to assert your truth to these kinds of people. When they're having you feel a particular way, cutting you down, having you feel that you haven't done enough or arrived or achieved or contributed enough, is to stand in that moment and look at, if I was being self-loving, what would I say? <laughs> and it's funny because that's what Marita's saying to herself. I should fuck off right now. Why am I staying here? Right? Because that's actually what that's what she's saying to herself. It looks like it was someone else. No, she's saying, fuck off, what are you doing here? And that's sometimes exactly what we need to do. I had to do that today. I had an experience with um, someone we know who um, had the opportunity to heal a beautiful woman and, and he chose to stand by his religious virtues instead. And I had to fuck off. I, I can't be in that space. Like, oh no, can't be here. This is too much non-truth. So take yourself. It's fine. It's not weakness to take yourself away from that. It's like being sunburned. Going, no, I should be able to withstand this. Oh, you know, get out of the sun. Get in the shade. Get away. Look after yourself. All right. So we're looking at self-sabotage. What else is bringing up for people with self-sabotage? Okay, big thing is this societal belief around that struggle leads to success. Struggle leads to enlightenment. Struggle is the end of the salvation. What a load of nonsense. Struggle is resistance to truth. The more we resist who we are, the more we struggle. Remember I said that to know where your limiting beliefs are, just look at where you're struggling. So struggle is a byproduct of the limiting beliefs. That's not furthering your enlightenment, is it? It's just a symptom of a non-truth. So let's bring a nice truth into here. What's the truth everyone needs to know? Or most Okay, it's a big one. Allow in, you don't have to do things your way to be right. Take a moment on that one. You Are you that to yourself or to someone else? That's I don't get it. Okay. Okay. Many of you are wanting to exercise your will, your goals, your plans, your ambitions. Because you want to, it's like, exercise control. I've got control. I'm going to see my plans through. I've got power. But most of those plans are the very long-winded way around things and will in, in undoubtedly incur struggle. And you're doing it because I want to be right. I want to be an authority in my life. I want to show that I can do it, that I can trust myself. Okay. The absence of all that stuff is power. To allow in the divine intelligence that's within you is your power. To surrender these plans to go, all right, I'm ready to hear a better way. That's you reclaiming your power, not abdicating power. Do you get that? It's often, well, if I give it over to some higher intelligence, I'm abdicating. No, you abdicated your power a long time ago when you got rid of that intelligence, when you stopped accessing it. The full reclamation of your power is to recognize that there is this infinite intelligence within you. It's not an outer intelligence, an outside intelligence. It is your intelligence. To put it up there or out there or somewhere else is the ego again. It's going to find all different ways to have you not do this. It is your intelligence. It is you. And I know that's not how it's perceived because there's a lot of layers of beliefs in the way of that. 
So as you move, I'm seeing you guys sitting tomorrow morning, you're sitting at the breakfast table going, how can I surrender to the fast track, a greater way, a simpler way, an easier way? Because for the most part, and this might sting a little bit, we have no idea. And we see this so many times with ourselves and with people. Well, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I remember this couple came to us and said, all right, well, husband and I, we've decided we're going to get, um, we're both going to get jobs so we can spend more time with the kids. <laughs> well, we need more money so we can spend more time with the kids. Seems to be a logic flaw there if you're both working for, you know, we do that constantly. We go and put all these long-winded ways in the way. So, truth for everyone on that is this. There's an easier way. There is an easy way to everything you're going about doing. And some of you are going, yeah, but I want to have my way so I can feel accomplished. I can acknowledge myself because I've exercised my way. And the response to that is, that's not your way. This is the joke. What you think is your way is somebody else's way. It's what your mum and dad said. It's what your boss said, your teacher said. It was never ever your way. You're just trying to enact it because you think it's your way. Your way is in here, not in here. It's in here. And the only way you're going to access that is to surrender, get rid of the, not the right way, the wrong way. Does that make sense? It's like the beliefs that we're holding were never yours to begin with. Who you think you are is nowhere near who you are. Because your identity that you're carrying around is just taken from every person you've ever met. Who's ever impacted you, imprinted you. Who you think you are is a combination of your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. For you, <laughs> all these people, right? And that inner truth, that inner intelligence is saying, stop following in everyone else's footsteps. It's the long way. It hasn't worked for them. Don't follow it. Okay, I feel I need to move on. What was the next one we're looking at? Um, how do we see ourselves as more? Okay, cool. Oh, let's do that. Okay, this is across the board. You all need to go on a diet. That's it. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Not a toy. You all need to go on. I'll specify what kind of diet. You all need to go on a diet from other people's opinions. People talk shit, right? Like or perceived opinions too. Not necessarily what people say; it's what you think they. Oh, yes, well, then you're then, yes, exactly, your opinions. <laughs> That's right. So, <laughs> need to go on a diet from taking other people's advice. Because all that noise creates clutter. And that clutter drowns out truth. You can't get your guidance when you've got 10 people in your head telling you what's what. Now, a lot of you like to go to friends and go, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think I should do? Or look in the book, oh, what does this say? That's not empowering. Why is it not empowering? <coughs> because you've gone, I don't know, you know more than me. And every time you do that, let me tell you what happens. You've got this beautiful brain that has two hemispheres. And when you're in self-love, they're connected. It's very interesting, two become one, oneness. But when you go out of self-love, which is thinking everyone knows more than you, guess what happens? You disconnect. When you disconnect, you drop the connection from truth, from universal intelligence. Every time you go, I'm going to ask this person's opinion, I'm going to ask this person's opinion. Because it's coming from self-doubt. It's not coming from, oh, I'm really loving myself, I'm really believing in myself, so I'm going to get everyone else's opinion. It's not what you do. I don't do that. I don't read anyone's books. I don't ask anyone's opinion. Because that's a denial of my power. If anything, I'll ask Sonia. I'll go, Sonia, what's stopping me from seeing this? That's a different question. 
if I can't see past the blockage, which is pretty rare, but it happens, then I'll get her help. That's different. Diet from people, diet from opinions, diet from magazines, diet from all this stimulus that's just creating noise. 